Greetings, YouTube! This is Longbow. Uh, a viewer of mine by the name of Toothless Atheism has asked me to uh, demonstrate how I went about making the acrylic slingshot from my last video. I figured, uh, why the heck not? Because I want to make another one anyway. So, uh, basically, it started out with a piece of acrylic such as this here. This one is five millimeters uh, it's thick. It's got a bit of a crack there, so I want to kind of design around that. But basically, I have to, since it's only five millimeters thick, I have to stack up several sections of it. So I drew a bunch of rectangles on here. And each one of these is uh, 10, cm 10 centimeters across in this dimension and 15 centimeters across in that dimension. Now I just have to cut out all these little rectangles on my van saw. sawing I now have these <clears throat> seven pieces of uh, acrylic here. One thing you'll notice if you cut acrylic with a bandsaw it leaves a really jagged edge and that's partly because uh, the bandsaw melts the acrylic as it's cutting it. So you have to remove that but even if you do remove the edge it leaves a slightly raised area. So what I'm gonna have to do with that is uh, I gotta chamfer all the edges. Uh, those raised sec sections will interfere with the, uh, the gluing process. So once I've broken that edge off, I'll just take a file and I'll pass it along there a couple times until there's no, no more bump at the edge here. I'll do the next side. Yeah, that one's nice and smooth on two faces. One more face to go. And then I've got another seven pieces here I gotta deal with. I've chamfered all the edges on this, uh, on these seven pieces of plexi here. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I can begin my glue. Well, I also uh, wiped off all the fingerprints. So, uh, I just got this pack of cigarettes that I cut in half here. And I'm just gonna make a little kind of containment vessel for this. That'll help to hold the glue in. Like so. I just encapsulated the, the, the edges of this in uh, cardboard. I'll take a rubber band and just snap it on there. A bit of cardboard is there for it. It keeps the glue inside and it stops these things from, sl from sliding around. Is once you put a little bit of glue on the surface and then you put another piece of plastic, it's going to want to slide all over the place. So, here's the glue I'm using, once again. Good old Gorilla Glue, cyanoacrylate glue. You can also use uh, Crazy Glue or Loctite Super Glue. So I'll remove all these but one. piece of plastic at the bottom there and it's just surrounded by this cardboard deal. Now 
now what I'll do, put on this first piece of plastic, well, this, this is technically the second one because there's already one in, in here, I'll take my glue, make sure there's bubbles, oh, one step I forgot is uh, I got this little piece of wood here, I'm going to put this underneath this. In between the wood and the plastic, I'm going to put this piece of paper. So that way that'll just catch any mess. And if the plastic does happen to bond something, it'll bond to the paper and not the wood underneath it. Okay, so we're ready. Wrong side. There, so on this, I'm going to pretty much draw an asterisk. That's like a... That's, six-pointed star. Actually, I'll make it an eight-pointed star. I'm gonna start at the corner here. You, you, you don't want bubbles like that. Oh, plague. Reasonable amount. I'm not being sparing with this at all. See, there's my eight-pointed star. Flip that over. That's my first two layers bonded together. Draw another one. Process until you've gotten through all seven sheets of plexi. piece, put it on top, and now the fun part, we take this, see right now it looks, you can still see the, the X's, or the crosses in here, take another piece of paper, and another piece of wood, begin clamping. Well, my first clamp will be applied in the center of this. Say that 
turned out rather well. There are some uh, some stress cracks within the material. That's to be expected because the glue dry uh, shrinks a little bit as it dries. But that's it's not really going to be a problem. Okay, so I've trimmed up uh, the four sides of this thing and the bandsaw. Now I've got a pretty decent uh, solid block of uh, acrylic here. And now that we're at this point, uh, it's the same as making any other slingshot. I'll just uh, roughly trace it out on here. And that gives me the basis of my template. <coughs> now I trim that out. Now I'm, I'm not going to make this uh, slingshot quite as complicated as the last acrylic one I made. Uh, I'm going to try to copy this design, my god slayer. It has uh, spherical connection points and I, I really like the way that works because it ends up stretching the bands from the center and it doesn't put as much pressure or as much tension on the edges of the band and I find it helps with band life. So I've gone ahead and made a Zoom that in. Gone ahead, ahead and made a template, and I traced that out on here. Now I'm just going to uh, where the tighter corners are, like right here. I'm going to drill some holes so I can more easily saw saw this shape. acrylic on a bandsaw is to use uh, a piece of wood underneath it because otherwise the, the molten plastic that comes off of here as you cut it will end up going inside your bandsaw and it'll gum up and inside this piece here and you won't be able to to push it through very well so by using a just like a scrap piece of wood it uh, helps to alleviate that problem because instead of just melting into one big glob the plastic uh, kind of flakes away. So, uh, here it is after coming off the bandsaw. Not too much to look at yet, so the next step will be to uh, round off all the corners on my belt sander. So there it is after the belt sanding, that's all the rough shaping done. Now I have the detail work to do with the hand files. 
So after quite a bit of filing, uh, I've rounded off all the rough edges produced by the uh, belt sander here uh, using this rasp. That was used on all the larger surfaces to smooth them out. And uh, also round off these knobs here. And I used the rat tail file to carve some grooves for the uh, bands that will secure the rubber bands to this on the tips of the forks. And I also used it to uh, begin my palm swell groove. So I dug kind of nice and deep into there. And uh, that's going to be where the little meaty bit of your palm goes in. It kind of fits right in there. So my next step will be to use this half round file. It's round on the top. And I'm going to expand this groove. And once it's actually large enough for my palm to fit into, then I'll be able to line up my fingers on this side and uh, dig out, dig out the, uh, the finger grooves. So let's get onto that. Well, I've done a, a little bit more shaping on it with the rat tail file. You can see that the uh, little palm swell groove I made there is uh, nice and form-fitting now. And uh, now I can get a nice firm grip on the thing and determine where my finger grooves are going to be. So I just traced the outline of each of my fingers on here and that tells me where I have to start digging into it with the rat tail file. I try to get these uh, little indentations aligned with the joints of my fingers. And once I've got those, all of those dug, I'll use the, uh, the half round file to smooth them out a bit and round them off and make it so I can actually fit my finger inside there. So here she is after the finger grooves have been carved out. They're now all fully shaped, as you can hopefully see. And I must say they fit my hand quite well. Pretty much all the joints are perfectly aligned. So now from here on in, it'll be completely polishing and uh, just removing the tool marks that uh, I've got in there. So uh, the first tool I'll be using is this handy dandy cabinet scraper, and that'll get rid of most of these uh, rough uh, gouges that the, uh, what do you call it, the rasp made. You just scrape away just like this. Oh, so here it is uh, after I've scraped off all the uh, rough bits with my cabinet scraper. Starting to look more and more translucent. So the next step uh, will be to have at it with this 100 grit sandpaper here. Just go over the entire surface. And when it comes to uh, working on the little convex surfaces in here, all I do is uh, take a piece of sandpaper and wrap it around my half round file here. That gives me a nice convex surface with which, with which to sand it. So we'll just get cracking on that. So I have completed sanding with the 100 grit paper. It's looking pretty decent. It's gotten a little bit cloudier, but all the uh, scratches and whatnot are gone, and it's quite a bit more round now, especially in the, uh, the tips here. So, I'll now double the grit that I'm using and switch to this uh, 220 grit paper. To be continued. So, now it's been completely sanded with the 200 grit sandpaper. Quite a bit more smooth. It's still pretty cloudy looking. So at this point I'm going to double the grid again and step up to this sandpaper which is uh, 400 grit. And this is a uh, wet, wet or dry paper. So just to make things a little easier I'm going to use a little bit of uh, mineral oil or baby oil. Apply that to the paper and that'll help to bleh lubricate the, uh, the sandpaper and keep down the dust. 
As you can see, just oiling it up a bit makes it look pretty damn sexy. So, I'm now done with the uh, 400 grit sandpaper. And I'm um, actually now I'm finished with sanding. Still a little bit of polishing to go though. So now I'm going to switch to a piece of uh, steel wool. This is the finest uh, type of steel wool I know of. It's grade 0000. zero, zero, zero. And when I apply this, I'm once again going to be using a little bit of mineral oil to keep things lubed and go to town. As you can see, it's already getting quite a bit more transparent. I kind of like the way the little cracks look in there. Well, see you in a bit with the final phase. So, I've managed to finish uh, polishing with the steel wool. As you can see, it's looking quite transparent now. And uh, the final step will be applying... Uh, i got this rag here. And I've got this product called Rotten Stone. I'm sorry, the can is upside down. I'm just going to put a little bit of the Rotten Stone on there. And I'm going to top it off with some mineral oil. As you can see, it's quite fine. It went right through. Um, this stuff is pretty much around like a thousand grit or something like that. But uh, a nice feature of this is that as it, uh, as you continue wearing it down, uh, the, the material breaks down and becomes finer and finer, so you get a very nice polish from it. So, here we go, the final phase. After this, it'll look like a piece of polished glass. So, after polishing it with this here dirty rag for about half an hour, uh, I'm now finally finished. You can see it's got a crystal polish on there. It looks like it's made of a piece of ice or something. It's starting to melt. And uh, I'm rather pleased with it. So I guess I'll put a set of bands on here now and we'll see how she shoots. So here it is from a slightly different angle. I just like the way it picks up the lights here. So here it is under some more normal lighting conditions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now here are the bands I'm going to be putting on it. At the, uh, the slingshot end, <clears throat> they are five centimeters wide. At the pouch end, they're three centimeters wide. And they're a total of uh, 28 centimeters end to end. It's a uh, cowhide with, uh, on this side, I've got some blue electrical tape. That's uh, the back side of it. This side, I've got some uh, solder duct tape to reinforce it. And I'm just going to uh, be attaching it using this little piece of uh, balloon. This is like a strip I cut off of the balloon. Just cut it into a bunch of rings like that. I like doing that because I find uh, balloons are a little bit stronger than TheraBand. And, uh, it, well, it, Makes for a nice attachment material, plus it adds a splash of color. So I'll just uh, put this on here. So here's the finished product. I've got the bands attached, and now that they are, I can show you why I like this uh, bulbous fork tip method here. So what happens is the, the center of the band, as you stretch it, remains taut, but uh, there's very little pressure placed on the very edges which uh, I think belongs their life. Uh, well, now that it's done, I guess uh, I should shoot it. Well, now it's time for the moment of truth. This will be the virgin firing of my latest slingshot. And, uh, well, since it's based on my God Slayer design, and since this video was suggested by you, Toothless Atheism, I'm going to go with your name suggestion, 
and call it the God Killer. So, never before fired. percent accuracy ratio now. <clears throat> well, as an added bonus, I decided I'd show you another kind of slingshot. This is basically the most simple slingshot you would ever see. It's just a length of blue TheraBand. I've got a piece of string tied up here. It's just tied onto the band with a, uh, a slip knot. And the string is tied to a pouch. And uh, when you fire this thing, Take the end of it, put it in your index finger, like so. And then you wrap the slingshot around your fist. And that's our slingshot. Once again, this will be the virgin firing of this one. Simplicity, it's uh, quite powerful. This is actually probably the most powerful type of slingshot you can get because it, it's just minimal wrist strain with this design. It's just a little bit intimidating. quite long enough for Butterfly, but uh, it works. Thank you very much for watching. And this one I call uh, Keep It Simple Stupid. Cheers. <laughs>